With a Diaper Day coming up, the day that Digimon fans around the world celebrate, I've been thinking about connections. Whether it be the connection between me and you, the connection between the Digimon fan base, things like Jogress in the anime. Connections to me are a huge part of Digimon, forging new connections and strengthening the connections you already have. So, in that spirit and an awkward segue, on today's video I'm going to be ranking my top 10 surprise connections in Digimon. <laughs> What is up everybody, welcome back to another video. And I'm still recording in one of the worst heat waves the UK has ever had, so let's make this snappy. Five years later. So without further ado, let's begin with number 10. Number 10 is Hexa Blaumon's connection to Witchelney, and I have been saving a Witchelney video for October, the spooky season. Maybe we'll bring back Cards October Spectacular. But interestingly, Hexa Blaumon, the final stage of Blue Kamon, one of my favorite Digimon of all time that originated in China, has links to Witchelney. But what is Witchelney? Witchelney is another universe or server connected to Digimon, where things like Wizardmon and Sorceramon come from. Again, I'll do a much deeper dive on this in October. But interestingly, Hexa Blaumon Blaumon, unlike Wizardmon, isn't from Witchelney, but simply goes there and spends a lot of his time there. It's an interesting connection between a Digimon and a Digimon adjacent V-Pet. And speaking of Digimon adjacent V-Pets, Number nine is Nanimon, who, fun fact, Nanimon isn't a Digimon, or at least wasn't originally. Nanimon is based on Oyaji Tachi, who is a Tamagotchi. And actually, I believe the lore is that Oyaji Tachi crossed over into the digital world and eventually over time became a Nanimon. Really interesting connection there, and I love that while Digimon is very much its own beast, there's little through lines you can feel back to its Tamagotchi origins. Some other allusions to Tamagotchi is that Wizardmon's staff and the alarm clock that is attached to Belfast from on sleep mode are both also modeled after a Tamagotchi V-Pet. I feel like if we're getting Metabots things, it'd be cool if we could get some Tamagotchi crossover with Digimon and just have Oyaji Tachi on the VB. Our next interesting connection is between Vidramon and Greymon. Vidramon, of course, being the partner Digimon to Taichi in the comics, and Greymon being the partner Digimon to Taichi in the anime. Well, I mean, Agumon spends more time as the partner, but Greymon is obviously part of the evolution line. And interestingly, as I talked about in my Kamon Digimon manga retrospective, which you can click the card above me to watch right now, or maybe wait till the video's over and then come back and click the card, <laughs> Greymon in Kamon Digimon very much resembles what would go on to become Vidramon or Zero Maru in Digimon Vita because it was drawn by the same artist. For Kamon Digimon, the illustrator Tenya Yabuna was given kind of free reign, and that kind of blew my mind because I always thought it was odd that v Tamer Taichi and Adventure Taichi had such different partners, but actually, basically, Zero Maru and Greymon had kind of cut from the same cloth. This also might be what influenced their decision to make Vimon Davis' partner in Zero 2, possibly. In at number seven is Nightmon. Nightmon is a strange case. Normally when you see one of the crests from Digimon Adventure emblazoned on a Digimon, it is a result of a couple of things. Either because it is an armor digivolution using the Digi-Egg or Digi-Mental that matches that crest, or because it's part of the evolution line of the Digi-Destined who has that crest. There are some exceptions where you see things like allusions to like the Crest of Courage in partner Digimon from other seasons. Marcus's Shine Greymon is an example of this, but generally that's more, I think, an allusion to the the fact that they're kind of following in the footsteps of Ty or whichever tamer they're related to. Nightmon is an interesting case because it bears on its back the Crest of Hope, which of course belongs to TK. We're almost halfway through the video and I've just remembered to turn this bloody thing on. Pretend that was on the whole time. I've been getting a lot of questions about that. It's called the Devoom LED speaker. I got it from Amazon UK. I don't know where it is in your equivalent. Just Google LED speaker and you'll find it. <laughs> As far as I can tell, there is no reference made, whether it be in the Digimon reference book or other media, as to why Nightmon would have the Crest of Hope. There's not any lore related to Nightmon being like part of Andromon or Holy Andromon's army. Even as far as I'm aware in V-Tamer, Holy Andromon slash Dominimon has this whole castle. I don't think Nightmon are there, I might be wrong. I'm gonna have to double check the pages for the manga retrospective, but in general, there's not this huge connection. Nightmon isn't an armor digivolution that Patamon or anyone else can become using the Digi-Egg of Hope. It's just an odd one to me that this random Digimon has the Crest of Hope, especially when Nightmon has got its own Digivolution line all the way through. Very odd. 
Our next surprise connection is Copymon and Copipemon, or Copipemon. Appmon was something of a fresh start for Digimon, a fresh start that didn't work and they had to revert back to using Adventure, but I digress. <laughs> and so most Appmon were wholly original, obviously based on apps, but they weren't based on previous Digimon that used to exist. But one of the exceptions to that rule is Copipemon, who is very clearly based on Copymon. Copymon, of course, as I covered in my 10 Digimon you might not know about video, is sort of a Digimon, but also like a function in one of the V-Pets when you try to copy Digimon. It's basically Digimon's ditto from Pokemon. It takes the form of the other Digimon, and when it's not taking the form of the other Digimon, it's a sort of pink squish. They adapted that idea into Appmon with Copipemon. Copipemon? Because the copy function is something that you can do on a cell phone within your apps and things like that. So it makes a ton of sense that something so similar would cross over, but I do like that they kept a similar design aesthetic as well, rather than just sharing the same name, which is true of other Appmon, where they're not based on the other Digimon, they just share the same name. Copipemon has a slightly different name, but a very similar aesthetic to Copymon, and that's why I think it's such a cool connection. In at number 5 is Metal Greymon Alterus Mode and Wergarurumon Sagittarius Mode. Mild spoilers for Digimon Adventure 2020 here, skip to this timestamp, but in the current season of the anime, Metal Greymon and Wergarurumon got entirely new forms when they kind of absorbed Dark Miasma. Except they weren't wholly original forms, because you see, these forms are very clearly inspired by the ex-antibody forms of Metal Greymon and Wergarurumon. I'm fresh off talking about Blast Mode Digimon, so mode changes are on my mind right now, and this connection I just find very cool. I kind of hoped we'd see more of it, in particular when Pegasusmon showed up in Digimon Adventure 2020, I was hoping we might get a Pegasusmon Pegasus mode? I guess it would be Hippocampus mode? I can't remember what the constellation's called. I'm sure there was another constellation name for Pegasus, but I cannot remember it for the life of me right now. But a nearby constellation would be Andromeda, so maybe it could be Pegasusmon Andromeda mode. But regardless, the idea of using these ex-antibody Digimon in new ways to make new forms is fascinating to me. Such a cool connection that they didn't have to make, and I really hope they do more of in the future, either in possibly a second season of this anime, or just in the franchise as a whole. I recently did that video on Blast Mode Digimon in the Digimon Axel. That would be a great opportunity to bring them back in a new way. In at number 4 is Mimicmon, and this one ranks so highly because it's so timely. Recently Bandai released a new wave or a new line of the caged Digimon figures, one of the very original Digimon toy lines, depicting Digimon in cages. There's something a little bit creepy about Digimon in as much that a lot of the original V-Pets and toys centered around putting them in cages, that's why the little brick V-Pets, they're kind of like jail cells. <laughs> kind of messed up if you think about it. But Mimicmon, a recent Digimon from the Pendulum Z series, is based on those figures. He's obviously called Mimicmon because he's a mimic, he's mimicking something. If you've played Dark Souls or Final Fantasy, you're familiar with the mimic chest concept. A Digimon based on Digimon toys. It would be like having a Digivice based on the on the Axel. That's a great idea, Bandai, write it down! But I didn't see a lot of fanfare about this when Mimicmon was released, people relating him back to the caged figures, and then when they started re-releasing the caged figures, only a few people, myself included, were even talking about like, well hold on, why doesn't Mimicmon get one of these toys? He's literally the toy! <laughs> Just a really sweet connection to me that a Digimon that came out so recently is harking back to something so far back in the franchise, which has in turn now become a new toy. <laughs> Circles, man. Time is a circle. <laughs> And next at number three is Lily and Sebastian. I like fighting games. I like Tekken. That is why this is my number three, because Lily, Amelia de Rochefort, is a canonical crossover between Digimon and Tekken. She appeared in Tekken first, the Tekken franchise. She wasn't in Tekken 1. Sebastian is also her butler from the world of Tekken, and she's just in Digimon World Redigitize. What? <laughs> I love this connection so much. It makes me wish that we could get Digimon in something like a Project Cross Zone to cross over with more Namco Bandai and Capcom stuff. Seeing like Mameo, Ryu, and Lily fighting in a tactical RPG would blow my mind. But just in general, having this Tekken character in a Digimon game, <laughs> one of the best connections slash crossovers we've ever had in the Digimon franchise. I love it. And number two, I had to throw it back to when I used to make a different kind of content. Toku content. <laughs> I don't watch Tokusatsu anymore, I haven't for a good couple of years, I removed myself from that fandom. But nonetheless, the connections to Kamen Rider in Digimon 
are intense. Obviously we have Justimon, who is a general allusion to Kamen Riders, all about the wind, which of course is reference to the Kamen Riders. In particular, Justimon resembles Rider Man, although his belt is a kind of generic Ichigo Kuga kind of look. His ex-antibody form, to me, it's never been clearly stated, very much resembles Forze Fire States, as well as just Kamen Rider Forze in general. The ex-antibody Justimon has these plugs, which he can insert to give himself different arms and legs and stuff, which is incredibly similar to the Astro Switches in Kamen Rider Forze. But that is not where the Tokusatsu connections, or specifically Kamen Rider connections, end in Digimon. Because in Digimon Cross Wars, in the protagonist character's Taiki's bedrooms are posters that allude to Tokusatsu characters. Kamen Rider Double, O's, and Forze. From what I can tell and what I can find, these posters aren't necessarily directly images of the Kamen Riders, but you can see one that very clearly resembles Forze, and then in the posters behind Taiki here are what I think are meant to be Kamen Rider Double, Kamen Rider Axel, Kamen Rider Eternal, something that kind of resembles Deno, but I'm really not sure, let me know in the comments down below, and something which looks like a monkey or something. And then on the left here, I think is supposed to be an allusion to Kamen Rider Birth, which is Oz's secondary rider. I'm not 100% sold on those ones. They could be different allusions, but let me know in the comments down below what you think. Either way, very cool that Taiki has these Kamen Rider posters in his room, but it does make sense because Riku Sanjo, who wrote for Cross Wars, also wrote for Double and Forze. There are other Digimon that make allusions to Rider, including Stingmon, who reportedly was inspired by Kamen Rider Ichigo, and Sylphimon, who very clearly has Kamen Rider Ichigo's Typhoon Belt. All right, and the number one surprise connection that you saw in that thumbnail, it has been alluded that Willis slash Wallace from Hurricane Touchdown or the Digimon movie was originally supposed to be Ryo. I know. As part of an interview for the Digimon official Super Encyclopedia, an interview was conducted with series staff members Hiromi Seki, Hiroyuki Kakudo, and Yukio Kaizawa. Going slightly in depth on the background or behind the scenes of production on Digimon Adventure, Zero Two, Tamers and Frontier. As part of the Zero Two segment, they talk about how Ryo was present present in Ken's recollection scenes or flashbacks. And Seki says, I think it had some kind of relation to one of the second series' movies. When we were working on the second series summer movie with Yamauchi-san, we actually held a lot of different proposals for the plot. One of the first proposals we came up with had Ryukun appearing in it, and I'm certain the theme of the movie even had some slogan, like there's a Digimon waiting for you. Think of it like some kind of imaginary plot that's since vanished. So we were going to go with this until the beginning of February. Then it all eventually fell through. That was for the summer movie for Zero Two Hurricane Touchdown. And that is wild to me. Obviously Willis or Wallace's Kokomon was corrupted by darkness, right? Depending on which version you watch. But in the original sub, Kokomon who becomes Endigomon is corrupted by a rogue virus. Let me get my old tinfoil hat theory on here and think about a tamer who is separate from the regular Digidestined, off on his own adventure, who has a good partner, and an evil partner. Ha, huh. maybe a boy called Rio with a Justimon and a Millennium on? <laughs> My theory, based on this factual evidence we have of a connection between Wallace and Rio, is that originally, instead of Wallace, the movie was going to have Rio feature prominently, and we were going to be covering the formative days of Rio's Millennium Mon being reborn as Monodromon. Because during Brave Tamer, Rio meets Monodromon, his partner, but we discover that Zed Millennium Mon is actually Rio's real partner, and to save the world, Monodromon DNA digivolves with Zed Millennium Mon to be reborn as a digi Egg. All these themes of having a good partner and an evil partner, rebirth as a digi egg or a digi egg getting corrupted. I think a lot of Willis's story is a holdover from this original Rio movie idea. And that is kind of wild to me. And it makes me wish for the movie where we got the Zero Two kids crossing over with Rio and potentially fighting some form of Millennium Mon. That would probably have been a lot cooler of a movie than Cherubi Mon. <laughs> Anyway, those are 10 of the most fascinating and surprising connections in Digimon. Were you surprised by any of them? Let me know in the comments down below. We know for a fact there is that connection between Wallace and Rio, but who knows how much further that connection actually goes in terms of plot. So are you surprised by that? Because that's why that's my number one. <laughs> As I said at the front of the video, and if you've gotten this far, please do like and subscribe. It helps immensely. And let's thank some channel members. The amazing Digidestined, NQG420, Triple D, Knight12, Andrew Sobel, Sad Uncle Callum, Crimson Dragon Slayer, and Anthony Born Tomasi, Digi Destined are holding it down, and the Tamers. The Blessed Rain, Mew Will, Errant Harpy, Nagel, Emily, John Hawkins, Mike McNulty, Theo Navarro, and Reese Williams, and to everyone in the Khan Club for getting that early access, and I'll see you next time when we go digital. Bye bye.